Mm -hmm. And welcome to episode 402 of Coffee and Sweet with Brenda. I'm just going to take a quick look at my Facebook page and make sure that we are live. And yes, we are. So let's continue on. I'm just going to kind of give you a little update as far as what's happening at, at um, Stampin' Up. So if you get my newsletter, you have all of that information. If you do not get my newsletter, um, let me just kind of give you a refresher here about what's going on. Um, now through the end of June, so through June 30th, you get an extra 10% off from bundles. So, are you already, bundles are priced at 10% off as usual in the catalog, but you get an extra 10%. So that being said, if you're a demonstrator, you get your demonstrator discount and the additional 10%. It's really quite a deal. The other thing that goes with that is the die cutting machines are also on sale, which that does not happen very often. It includes the standard size um, machine, which you can see right here. It includes the mini, and it includes the Boho Blue Mini as well. So check those out, and like I said, that goes through the end of June. So you won't want to miss out on that. What else did I have in my newsletter that I thought was? Noteworthy, of course, I have my June host code, which is right up here. If your order is under $150, you want to um, be sure to use the host code. Um, yeah. Cool. Today's project is going to be um, kind of a replay. I had my mystery stamping happens the second Wednesday of every month. And so it was just this past Wednesday, which we had really big storms here. And fortunate, I was fortunate. I had no damage, but um, many people around the area, right now they're reporting that there were like three different tornado touchdowns. So people east of me, north of me, like south, um, southwest of me all had some pretty significant damage. So um, keep those people in your thoughts. And like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful that I did not. So let's get started. I can see a few people are hopping on. Good morning, Joyce Paulson. Happy you're here. Are you home home or are you still in, where was it? You were in Detroit Lake, right? Yeah. All right. Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome. I'm sure we'll have some other people hopping on as as we get started. Um, but like I said, the project we're going to do today is going to be kind of a um, a replay of um, my mystery stamping, which, like I said, was last Wednesday evening. And just due to the weather and the power out and whatever, I did it wasn't very well attended. So I thought, what's that? It's a very um, versatile layout. Oh, look at you guys. We're great with the little Emmy girl back here. Yep, she's just sleeping on her little mat to play. Um, so I'm going to redo um, my mystery stamping card because I think, think it's worthwhile, and I hope you do too. So let's flip down. Okay. I think. I don't need to see my legs. Okay, I think we're good. Let's get started. The suite of products that I'm using today is from um, page 45 in the annual catalog, the new one. New being it started the first part of May. Um, so on page 45, there's a suite of products called the Lily Pond Lane. 
But I just think these products are so sweet. Like, I love them. Love them, love them. And let's go on here. I'll just show you quickly. So it's the bundle, which remember the bundle right now, extra 10% off besides the usual 10%. Plus, if you're a demonstrator, you get your demonstrator discount plus the 10%. So it's a great deal. 15 dyes and 18 photopolymer stamps. All right. And then, of course, you cannot miss the sweet pack of paper. There are ducks, there are frogs, there are koi fish. I think that's what they're called, koi fish. And great sceneries, little lily pads. So I think, I think I'm on my third pack of the 6x6 48 piece of paper, just because it really is like so sweet. And then you get these, what they're calling adhesive back dappled dots. And they coordinate beautifully with the, with the paper. All right. So for today's project is what you're going to need is, and I'll put all these measurements when I post to my YouTube channel. Um, I will, it looks like my comment aren't refreshing so if you're out there and you've commented and i haven't said good morning good morning to you all all right you need a piece of card base that measures five and a half by eight and a half board at four and a quarter you'll need a piece of designer series paper or you could use solid cardstock i'll show you a card at the end of a couple cards actually at the end of um, our demonstration today, but I cut this piece that measures five and a quarter by four. I have a piece of designer series paper um, that measures five and a quarter by one and a half. I have a piece of solid or you know basic white cardstock. You could use solid cardstock too. This measures three and a half by three and three quarter. And then I have a piece of coordinating designer series paper that measures three by three. We're going to cut those. So let me get those, get those pieces for you. Um, I have just a scrap strip. This is the half inch strip that I'm going to stamp my sentiment on. And then I had fussy cut a couple of the koi fish from a piece of designer series paper. I have an envelope, and then I have a three by six piece of the designer series paper for my envelope flap, and then this was just a scrap piece from um, the six by six piece, but that I'm going to use on the inside of the card. And this measures five and a quarter by three quarter. All right, I think I've got everything now. So I'm going to bring in a trimmer, and we're going to take this three by three piece of um, designer series paper, and I'm just going to cut this into one inch strips. I do like to keep them in order. I don't know how necessary that is, but I just like to keep them in the patterned order. The pattern order, I should say. All right. So then, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stamp and seal, and I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back. Use liquid glue, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. So, is what I like to do is I put the first one on, and as I just eyeball it. You can measure if you if you want to be 100% accurate. But I like to take this first piece and I try to make equal borders top and bottom and then on the side. Okay. 
So now I'm going to take the the right piece of part back and add my adhesive. And again, I'm just going to try to match up the same borders. Okay. And one more time. If you use liquid adhesive, you have a little bit better chance of being able to reposition once you put it down. Now, the reason I do the outside edges first and then the middle is because now I can line up the top and bottom and then just make sure that those little spaces in between are even or as even as I can get them. So, like so. Anybody out there, these are koi fish, right? You can, you can see they are. I'm just going to fold my card base on the score light. Give it a good fold. My bone folder. Great. Now I'm going to take my piece of designer series paper that measured four by five and a quarter. Look how cute this paper is. I kind of hate to cover it up, but there's more pieces in there that I can use. So I'm gonna, and I'm just gonna bite the bullet and cover it up. And I'm going to center that on my card base, just like that. I'm going to take this strip, and I was trying to decide for this one. It's like, should I do koi fish up? And then it was like, no, I think it takes away. So I'm going to cover them up. And I'm just going to put this, like, right at the bottom third. And because I picked this striped paper, pattern paper, it made it really easy to get my piece of design slate series paper on this plate. All right, so next, I'm going to take my um, focal piece here, and I'm just going to add some dimensionals to the back. I always like to do five to keep the center raised. Um, sometimes when there's a lot of humidity in the air, it makes, if it's not supported in the middle, it sometimes will sag and there's nothing, well, there's a lot of things worse than a saggy card. We don't like sag. So I'm gonna put this on, just leaving a little bit of the designer series paper at the bottom. And again, because I used the striped paper on the back, it made it easy to get it on there straight. I'm going to bring in this scrap piece that was half inch wide. And I'm going to be using this sentiment from um, the stamp that says, You make me happy. And I'm going to stamp that on here with the coordinating color of Kitty Pink. I'm just going to ink this up. Remember to move all around on your ink pad so that you get a good ink image. And then I'm just going to stamp this in the center. Or approximate center because I'm probably going to end up trimming the edges. But isn't the font cute in this set? I love it. All right. So for the inside of our card, I'm going to be using the stamp that says, Have a lovely day. Just open it up. I'm going to stamp it. Always giving the ink time to um, 
penetrate the paper. You don't have to you don't have to stamp fast, just with an even hand is all. Okay, and that's all for our stamping. Now let's decorate up the inside of this card. I'm gonna use that strip of, of um designer cherry paper. And I'm just gonna put that right down here at the bottom. I don't feel like I want my very straight and try to I shouldn't have rubbed it down before I looked, but I did. It's a slow peel. And there. Now I have it straight. And you'll see that this this koi fish is kind of missing its tail. That's all right. I'm just gonna add some adhesive. You can feel it all. And I'm just going to line this up as if I want to trim. I want to trim this. I, you know, yeah, I feel like this edge is just a little bit long. There we go. And then I'm going to take my little koi fish and I'm going to match it up the edge and just have him or her or it or they or she however um, picking up towards our inside sentiment and now for the outside I'm going to leave I'm going to cut this off as straight as I can and then I'm going to put it on here like so. So what I need is one dimensional right here at the end to support the end because this one was raised, this one's not. And then I'm just going to add some stamp and seal to hold this down. The top of my backing makes it stick a lot better. <laughs> okay. So there's my sentiment, and now I'm going to add this adorable little fish. And again, I want to raise that up just to give my card a little bit of dimension. Now, on your edges with your stamp and dimensional, I always go around and just squeeze. It takes but just a minute, and then you can use everything on your sheet of dimensions. There's like no way. Okay. Now I can just add. I think that'll work pretty well. On this V shirt, I just fussy cut from the designer series paper. And I thought it gave a cute little addition to the card. What are we thinking so far, ladies? I'm just going to try refreshing it and see what happens. Because I can see that people are on. I'm just I just don't think my comments are working, but that's okay. All right. Now I'm going to bring in these cute adhesive back dappled dots. And look at how perfect these match with the, um, you know, I'm not really sure what color that is. They kind of look like pebble tap in a way. Let's see what it says on the back of our paper. That's always a good, oh, I bet you they're gray granite. Gray granite. So I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool and I think I do want to use the gray granite. I'm just going to add a couple little Out. 
one right there. So there we have it. You make me happy. Have a lovely day. All right, let's do our envelope, and then I'll show you the alternate cards I have for you. So if you watch, if you watch me on a regular basis, you know that I do not like naked envelopes. So is what I like to do on these is I take my stamp and seal and I go right along the score line for the flap. And then I just kind of go right along the edges and one down the middle. All right. Then I take my, you can do this however you want. Sometimes if you do it this way with the, the sticky up, it makes it easier to get lined up right at the, um, or not. Look at, oh, happy Saturday, right? Got it. Just going to line up the corners here, the edge, and then press it down. And then when I open it, I'm able to use the flap as the cutting edge with my paper snips. And it's really easy to just follow the edge of the envelope. Okay. So now I have this cute little matching envelope to go with my little card. All right, you guys, that is my project for today. Let me show you the alternate card that I made. Um, that was for my Wednesday night mystery stamp last week. And I die cut the lily pads with one of the little um, lily flowers and then used the lily pad paper with pink gingham. And all of the designer series paper comes in that, um, in the lily pond lane six by six. And then on the inside, it says, have a lovely day and another lily pad with flowers. And then I'll show you something totally different. And I think these are always fun to see because this different paper can make the same layout look so different. So let's take a look at this one. And this is retired. This was one of the envelopes and one of the cards um, or one of the pieces from the card pack. This was Memories and More out of um, the last catalog. But I just cut the envelope and used the inside liner of the envelope for my background. I used a piece of one of the cards for my one and a half by five and a quarter strip. And then this was a leftover piece from a paper pumpkin. I just stamped the sentiment and then die cut the leaves. So, but same layout, just different papers. And look how different they look. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Copy and Create with Brenda. And I will see you back here next Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye for now.